What's going on? What's going on? Damn, I've been on the road heavy lately. These doctors I work with all over the damn place, but it is what it is. Got to get that bread. So, you know, I want to talk about um, Tyson Fury versus um, Dante Wilder and the arbitration that they're having and um, how it affects if I don't believe, you know, Eddie Hearn would do a Fury versus, you know, Joshua fight at all. Just, and I've said that in my previous video, there's why. But skip that to the side. Let's say they actually weren't wanted to do the fight. And let's say they actually were really working to truly make this fight happen. And, you know, why some people would say, you know, especially me, I'm saying that it wouldn't matter. It's, it's not going to happen, you know. Um, and the arbitration would be a major part of that. Let's say they really truly wanted to do the fight. And some people, think, you know, have this belief in their head that, oh, you know, if, you know, all they can do is, is put him into a space where he could, quote, just, you know, sue Fury, you know, for damages or whatever it might be. But that's it. Where it's going to get like 10 million or something like that. And that's going to be it. You know, but the other fight's going to be able to, you know, still happen. You know, that's not the case. And I understand a lot of people don't know, understand how things, you know, work in the United States and how the court system work in the United States. You know, um, even on the civil aspect of it. You know, because people are thinking, I guess some people have mentioned that, oh, it's not a criminal thing. So, and it's not in a real court. No, it's in a real court. And it's a real judge that's in, um, that's in, in charge of this arbitration. Um, before they did the second fight, you know, Wilder's team's not dumb. They understand, they've seen what Tyson Fury has done before. Um, as far as when it came to the Klitschko, when he fought against Klitschko. And um, he won that particular fight. He was supposed to do a rematch. And the rematch never happened, you know. They understand that, you know, that, that particular situation. You know, they understand that after their first fight, they were going to do a rematch. And Tyson Fury decided to, now nah, I'm going to go over the side of the top rank and ESPN and I'm going to do my thing over there. So because of its history, they understood that, you know, things kind of got to be ironclad, you know, to make sure that, you know, um, a rematch happens. You know, and you had two big entities, you know, that set up this fight, you know, Fox and ESPN. A lot of funds were put up uh, where the first fight was done. Um, basically, it was run by Top Rank and ESPN. Then the second fight was supposed to be on Fox. You know, supposed to be run by Fox, which also ends up being a big, a big issue because, you know, you had this agreement between these two big giant entities. And if they were able to, let's say, walk away from this, you can kill any kind of thought process of a, of a Crawford versus, um, a, a versus a Earl Spence or any kind of major about being done by those two entities again it would never happen they would never do it because they can't trust they wouldn't be able to trust espn to hold their word when it pertains to you know when it pertains to an event like that or an agreement like that that's a major issue like i don't think people understand how massive of an issue that is you know especially also because both of them have the same parent company as well and disney it's just it's not a good look you know that's you know that's the number one thing. Number two is way, the way that agreement was set up. The way this agreement was set up, you know, if you know, it was supposed to have a rematch, if for some reason a rematch didn't happen, um, they could you know go in front of a judge. They had a judge picked out already um, where they could you know put out their grievances. Where first they you know they were they have a mediation where they try to work out the issue that they're having. That's what they had first. Now if they couldn't work out. Uh, you know their issues in mediation it goes to arbitration and in that arbitration both sides put out their you know whatever and after that the judge you know which is deliberating right now ends up making a decision the decision that he makes is final and is binding which means you can't <laughs> You can't, you basically, you can't try to go to another court. You can't try to appeal it. Nothing. What he says is law, you know, and it can be enforced and it will be enforced by the law. If that's what, you know, what, that's what it takes. It will be enforced. And one of the things that judge can do is let's say if those two were said, okay, we're official, we're having this fight and we're having this, he could, he'll put an injunction on that fight and shut it down right away. That's one of the reasons why they're not doing no fight. And Eddie Hearn would never was to go put himself and put his fight into a situation like that to be binded into a contract, let's say, to fight another fighter. But then at, 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 but then at the same time, you know, have to sit there and wait 
for this, you know, this um, um, decision to be made by, you know, by this other party before anything can happen. You know, Eddie Hearn said it from his own words. He said, man, they're going to be stuck in that litigation and that mediation forever. That thing could be a year plus before any of them do anything. That's what he was just saying previously. Then all of a sudden, oh, he switched up, you know. He switched up. Every once in a while, even though regards to what he says, you, you'll catch him telling saying the truth. <laughs> if you just wait and listen at him, listen to him. That becomes a problem, you know, because he can't do that. And then besides that, whatever he decides, whether it be, he could make multiple decisions. He could say, cool, you can go fight, but you got to pay this man. And the damage is, I don't think people understand. If he decides that, the damage wouldn't be no five, no $10 million dollars. The damages will be have to be something that you know ends up making this man whole. I don't think people understand what how massive that rematch would be. You're looking at probably you don't know. You could look. You're looking at poss the possibility of this man saying, "Okay, cool. You don't want to do it. Fine. You got to give him thirty million dollars. You got to give him forty million dollars." Like we're talking about massive amounts of money that they could have to pay. Because him not getting that rematch affects him heavily. And then, you know, he wins that bout, him having that belt. That puts him into another plane as far as the funds that he can make later where that's now compromised by him not getting that rematch. So who knows how much that judge will say he'd have to pay. But more than likely, what the judge is going to do is we have to look at history. Well, I was... What I always do is, like when it comes to promoters, I usually end up being right about these things because I look at their patterns, I look at their blueprints, I look at how they move, how they operate with all their fighters, and just in general. I look at that, so by looking at that, I take the feelings out of it, all that out of it. I take what, even what they say out of it. I go by what they usually do and how they operate and how they move. And I'll say, you know, for the second time. And by going by that, and brushing off all the BS, all the fluff, I usually end up, you know, being correct in my assumptions. So even when it comes to a situation like this, I'm going to look at the United States and I'm going to look at a previous situation and see how that was handled. That would be um, Rockman versus, what the hell, Lennox Lewis. In that particular situation, Rockman knocked out Lennox Lewis. Then after they knocked out Lennox Lewis, he wanted to go do another fight. Lennox Lewis filed a suit. An injunction was put forth. And in that case, the judge decided that, especially with with that with Lennox Lewis's age, him not getting that rematch could do irreparable harm to his career in his future. Especially with him being that you know that old, being 30 whatever he was. Kind of like Wilder, 33 years old could put him to a space where he never gets another opportunity to get that title or belt again. So, you know, and seeing this, he decided that you got to fight him. That Rockman could not have another fight and he had to fight what's to go Lennox Lewis next. That had to be his next fight. And that's more than likely what that judge is going to decide and say. You know, especially with Anthony Joshua holding those three belts, especially then Tyson Fury holding one belt. And all of a sudden, all these parties, one of these two parties would have all these belts. Both parties who have a history now of them not wanting to fight Dante Wilder. So especially with him being 33 years old, yes, he could be put into a space where he never gets another shot at that belt ever again. Or for a substantial amount of time. It puts him into a space where he could lose a lot of funds by not having the ability to fight that man a second time. So a judge looks at that. Reality is, if when you look at in the past and you see what was decided before in the past, that says that he's going to say this man, Tyson Fury, is going to have to fight Wilder. You know? He's going to have to fight Wilder. And he's not going to be able to just brush that off. He has contracts. He has... Um, he's tied to, to, you know, to American entities like ESPN, like Top Rank. You know, so if you try to skirt from that those situations, they're also part of the suit. They're part of the same party. They can be held liable. It can get real ugly. Then it can, then that'll really get ugly. 
is somehow now top rank or somehow ESPN has to pay for this. And and it's buying you can't even appeal it. Like you gotta have you gotta pull that money up. And I just don't see it happening, you know. So regardless of what you might think or what your viewpoint might be, and you're allowed to have your viewpoint. You know, you're allowed to think that, hey, it's going to happen. You know, this fight's going to happen, you know, but you can't just brush off <laughs> the other side of the spectrum or what, you know, other people might believe, you know, especially when you're coming with history, you know, of the same type of situations and what was rendered in the exact same country. And if this is in the UK and or in Russia, you know. Now, Bobby, I would think about it completely different, especially if it was like in Russia. I would think about it. I'm like, oh, he ain't getting that rematch. It's not happening. You know, unless Wilder was best friends with Putin or something like that. That'd be the only way out of it. You know, it'd be like, nah, man, that rich man rematch is definitely not happening. Hell no. But because of the location it's in and also because of how these things were handled before in the past. You know, skipping all the other stuff, I'm just saying as if. They really wanted to do that fight over there. Because I don't believe they really do. They, you know, they can roll this facade on for a couple more weeks. You know, before it's in the water. But, you know, let's just put that aside. And like I said, and act like they really, you know, want to do this. You know? That would be the problem with it. You know? So, but like I've said before on many occasions, you know, time reveals all at the end of the day. So, you know, I don't really care what's said this week. What anybody says. We'll see what happens, you know, in a couple of weeks. But for now, like, subscribe, share. I'm out.